Hi everybody, welcome to the Civil War Monitors Behind the Lines. I'm your host, Katie Brackett Fialka, and today I'm talking with Dr. Karen Cox, who is Professor of History at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte. She's also the author of two books, Dixie's Daughters, The United Daughters of the Confederacy and the Preservation of Confederate Culture, and Dreaming of Dixie, How the South Was Created in American Popular Culture. And she writes the blog, Pop South, Reflections on the South and Popular Culture. So, Dr. Cox is here today to talk to us a little bit about something we've all been seeing in the news, the debates over the Confederate flag and, more largely, Confederate commemoration. Um, rather than approach this in strictly contemporary terms, Dr. Cox is going to historicize this debate for us by considering whether or not there would have been a flag debate in 1915. So, Dr. Cox, what do you think? Would there have been a flag debate in 1915, and why or why not? Well, absolutely not, um, because by this time, by 1915, you know, white supremacy was in full effect um, with uh, across the nation, not just in the South. The United Daughters of the Confederacy was probably one of the most important um uh, in, in terms of influence, women's organizations mm -hmm. within the American South and Confederate monuments were being built and had been built and they were placing flags in the uh, classrooms of public schools and so it just would have been beyond their imagination to think that this would be controversial because everything about the American South at that time was a culture of white supremacy, a culture um, that revered Confederate heroes, and uh, it just would have been beyond their their thinking that something like this, what's occurring today, could have occurred. Mm -hmm. If you could project about what UDC leaders might have to say about how the flag's use has changed over time, so the Confederate flag you know, during the war versus the Confederate flag in 1915 versus 1950 or 1954. Um, and then even today, what do you think they might have to say? Well, um, if I could go back to 1915, mm -hmm. um, one of the big events of that year was the, you know, the premier birth of a nation, mm -hmm. um, which was popular across the co country, not just in the South. You know, and the battle flag is in full view, and they would have highly approved of that, and in fact, they did approve of the movie. The United Daughters of the Confederacy were okay with the first clan, the clan of Reconstruction, mm -hmm. um, but they were concerned about the second clan because they weren't of the similar class of people as they as they understood it of officers and and the and the like, and um, and they. They had they they actually expressed some concerns in 1915 about the rise of the second Klan mm -hmm. uh, and who was representing uh, the flag in that in that context. And, and during the 1950s and 60s, in terms of its use by segregationists, I think they they approved of that. I mean, the United Daughters of the Confederacy was still active um, in in those decades, and they were also um, you know they they would have been sort of probably more aligned with citizens councils than they would have been aligned with, you know, the, the sort of rabble rouser rednecks that were using, you know, or on the streets uh, and waving the flag in, in that, in that way. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then, uh, more recently the use of the flag by neo-Nazis and others, I, you know, I think they may have expressed some concern with, um, groups like that appropriating the flag because for them, <clears throat> even though the original UDC were very much um, in line with white supremacy at the time, I think that they would not have wanted it to be appropriated for people who were not Confederates, you know, mm -hmm. that, that they were not descendants of Confederates or it wasn't being used in, as they might have Considered it an appropriate way, and one that honors Confederate uh, men and women, and um, because they were also about not just uh, honoring, as they call them, the generation of the '60s. Both men and women are the are the individuals they were um, interested in commemorating. So they would see, I think, I believe, and I it's hard to know because yeah. it's, to look yeah. in that crystal ball. <laughs> um, however, I think they 
would have had difficulty with an or, you know organizations or groups of people calling themselves neo Nazis um, appropriating the flag for their use. Mm -hmm. uh, they might not have really uh, cared for you know this version of the Klan that, for example, that appeared. Uh, around the Confederate monument at the South Carolina State Capitol. They might have had problems with them. Again, this was about class difference. The original UDC considered themselves of an elite group of people, that they were descendants of officers, um, not the regular soldier. They, so, you know, leaders within the organization wanted to take care of that, those people, you know, the, 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 the average Confederate soldier. That's why you had things like Confederate soldiers' homes and widows' homes um, for, for indigents. But they all, often considered themselves of an, uh, of an upper class uh, and uh, operated along the lines of noblesse oblige mm -hmm. uh, in terms of dealing with you know, people outside of their class. So they would have seen people like today's neo-Nazis as kind of beneath them uh, in terms of class. Now, if someone's interested in learning a little bit more about your work or following your blog, where would they find that information? They could just simply go to my blog. Um, just Google Pop South, and okay. it'll and it'll come up, and there are links there to the the books I've written, and also some uh, some good blogs on this very topic. Awesome! Thank you so much for your time. All right, you're welcome. Thank you.